So uh, JPEG 2000, which is a highly compressed JPEG image, uh, also not typically supported by browsers. And this is just a small image, which is supported by browsers. You can load it. But I want to show uh, basically, uh, uh, I'm in the wrong folder, cd. slash. There we go. So, uh, uh, so I want to show an example of what, something a little more exotic that you can do with these kind of things. So if I go to that web page here, which is right here, I can click on these links and, and, and of course, uh, if it was the right example, which isn't already loaded, uh, temp app example one. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so basically, uh, the browser by default doesn't support them. So if you click on them, it'll try to download them because it doesn't know what to do with them. It's expecting you to have some application. The favicon, of course, works as a little tiny image here. So uh, what I want to show you first, if you go to the Brown Dog web page, uh, Confluence, uh, try it. What we have is a piece, a little piece of JavaScript right here that you can add to your HTML. And basically, what it'll do is make it so that you can, in the web page, uh, take care of some conversions. So I just basically added up here to the head. And so what I can do then is add to my links uh, a, a, an attribute, uh, DAP, and specify some desired output format for that file. So I'm just going to add DAP to all these things here, except for this last one. I want to show you XML. Because you can, uh, as I'll talk about later on, is that uh, one of the things you can do with data in terms of making it more easily parsable for an end user application. So if I go back to that page now and I reload it, the little, little brown dog Logan shoots across. And if it, wasn't, <laughs> if it wasn't so big, you would see the powered by brown dog thing at, at the side there. At the side there. Oh, there we go. That took care of it. And so basically, the idea now is that uh, these links are all modified. You can see down at the bottom here, uh, these REST endpoints have, been, uh, have taken their place. And so basically, when you click on them, uh, these conversions will just happen in the background of the data access proxy server. So this is a PGM rendered in the browser. This is a JPEG 2000 that'll get rendered in the browser. Come on, it takes a little bit of time uh, to process it. There we go. So you can see it in the browser. Uh, the UIC favicon, which I transferred into XML. So there is no direct way to X. So there's this language called DFDL, which I'll explain later, which kind of is a way of uh, storing specifications in a machine readable format. I wrote one for PGM only. Uh, but uh, what the DAP does is it changes these things together. So there's a conversion from the native PNG to PGM, and then from PGM to XML using a DFDL schema. And so basically, it, it marks it up as XML now. So these are all the pixels. So the idea is you have some image you don't understand the format for. You could get it dumped out to you as XML. I did a small image because it takes a little bit of time in the current version of DFDL that we're using. And so uh, basically, that's the idea of using the, the, the um, in HTML. You can similarly do that with uh, images. So if I go to uh, example2.html, uh, let me switch over back to here. And I'm, I'm sorry, this is a little running over Dave, but I, th I think this is pretty crucial. So, uh, so basically, I have a, a web page with, it, with, it, with, it, with an image in it, and it doesn't show up. And that's because it's, again, a JPEG 2000. It, it's not supported in my browser. So again, what I could do is uh, basically just uh, add my JavaScript call there at the top, and then add here to this image tag this time, uh, dap equals JPEG. And it'll, it'll just take care of it in the background. So I just reload the page. It marks it up. And it's, it takes a minute to load, but it, it'll, it'll eventually uh, pop up for you. So uh, that's uh, kind of one of the uh, use cases we see for web developers. So what I'll do next is go to uh, one I can see for everybody. So what we did also, and Luigi will show one for the data tilling service here, is we made something called a bookmarklet. So what a bookmarklet is, if you didn't know, you can do this, is you can basically take a piece of JavaScript code and put it in a bookmark. And so what you could do then is then run it on arbitrary pages, this JavaScript code. So we made these marklets for the data access proxy and for the data tilling service that'll just basically mine through the images and links on a page and, and replace them with uh, uh, calls to these two services so that you can transform them into something usable or search them in the case of the data tilling service. So uh, what I have here is, uh, again, let me go to example three. Well, I don't think I put that there. So let me go to uh, here. So here, I just put together a simple directory uh, with a bunch of files that aren't typically accessible in a browser. So again, my JPEG 2000 image, a Microsoft Word document, uh, zip files, which typically you, you're expected to download before you can access and you can see what's inside them, a CSV file, which might work in the browser. No, nope, it doesn't. Uh, and, and some other stuff, a SID file, which is a large map comp uh, compression format. And so uh, basically, what I'm going to do now is I would like to get access to these files on this web page. And so what I can do is I go back here to my dat bookmarklet on this triad page. 
And so the way it presents itself is it, we try to make it look like a Mac installer. So basically what you could, all you have to do is drag this icon here up to your bookmarks. And basically it puts this bookmark here which calls JavaScript code on arbitrary pages. And so what I can then do is go back to my directory and then I can call that bookmark on it. And so what it's doing is it's running the data access proxy on all the files on this page. And what it's doing is looking at the file extensions, querying the data access proxy for all the output formats I can reach from that given file extension. And so what it does is if you move your mouse over it, it's added this little menu to it. So you can go through, like for this JPEG 2000 case, and go pick a format that I can actually load. And so it'll actually carry it out uh, for you uh, in the browser. Again, these things take some time. It's all, uh, it depends on the tool, which are all black boxes as far as it's concerned. And so uh, let's see if this, so right now the data access proxy is running two servers. One of them is running this Windows program called Earthenview, which, um, oops, uh, that was not the one I wanted to use. Uh, but basically it uh, deals with, um, uh, deals with uh, these SID file formats. So if I go here to SID and go out to uh, JPEG, uh, it'll take care of it for, uh, for us and render it in the browser. Um, There we go. So that you can then preview the data. So there's also these things. Uh, so, there, the, so zip files, I mentioned those. As you typically, you have to download them. You don't have to with the data access proxy running. You can convert it to HTML, uh, which is what this, well, the way directories present themselves on a page. And it'll basically render it in browser for you as, HTML, as uh, something you can directly access. You, you could then click on the links and download them directly from here. A, again, a TIFF is not supported by my browser. So I can recursively call the data access proxy again. And then I can go here and uh, convert it over to a JPEG, for example, and carry it out and then view it in the browser. So uh, other stuff, so I could do this document, uh, convert it to a PDF to view it here in the browser and, and uh, audio files, video files, and so forth. So um, in terms of time, Dave, I'm, I'm like totally over, right? So yeah, no. So uh, yeah, okay. So let me just finish up then. And, and <laughs> so so there's audio files and video files. It supports like this. Uh, uh, let me just show that. Uh, FLAC file here, typically not supported in a browser. It's kind of this new open source compression format for audio, converted over to MP3. Played in the browser, uh, and uh, probably the last thing, Luigi, if you want to. Oh. It, it, the last thing, Luigi, if you want to start coming up here, is uh, what, what, what I'll show is what I thought was kind of funny, uh, was uh, Michael Dietz, our colleague here, as we were preparing for these presentations, uh, uh, likes to use open source software. Uh, he uses open office. My colleague, Rob Cooper, who was going over the slides with him, does not have that software. He has a Mac. And so he was complaining and asking one of us with a Linux machine to convert it over uh, to, uh, to doc for him or PDF. And so I spent a night doing this, adding support for uh, the DAP on Dropbox. So basically, I can run it here, and it basically, it's, it took a while because they're kind of tricky. They, they hide their links there in there. And uh, basically, it, what it does is adds this menu here so that you can then uh, uh, directly download it as a, a PDF, for example. So this one takes about a minute to run, so I'm going to switch to a different menu. Uh, again, the black box, is, the software is a black box, so I have no control over that. This is why you need a cloud uh, with a bunch of them. But uh, before I switch to Luigi, and as I wait for this one to finish, uh, let me just go to the DAP, again, emphasizing that this is a service with a REST endpoint. So 8184 is the port it's on. So this is the REST interface to it, again, all in the URLs. Uh, and these are the REST endpoints that it provides you. So for carrying out conversions, for viewing a form to you, so you can access it on the web, another, a number of other information. These are the software servers which are providing the software. So there's two of them at the moment. Uh, this is the software that it has available, just some toy software for this demo uh, on these two, serv on these two pieces of software. Uh, uh, basically, uh, for a conversion, you would specify convert. It would list off all the output formats that are available for a conversion. You would pick one of them. These are all the input formats that are available for that particular conversion. Uh, and so this is finishing up here and loading. But uh, so basically the idea is this service uh, is the, the, the key thing we're building. And the bookmarklet is an example application that's using it. The JavaScript that I showed you is also a sample application that uses it. So uh, uh, that's the idea. So I'm going to stop here. Uh, there we go. Here, here's Mike's thing, Rob Cooper. There you go. So you can view it as a PDF without having open office on your machine. So these are, again, toy use cases. The idea here is we're, the science is the driving force here. So we're starting to add this kind of stuff uh, uh, for that. 
Uh, and one of the things we were looking at right now off the bat is some of the stuff in Pecan, like pulling stuff from the NAR database uh, into the various models in Pecan uh, for that. So what Luigi will show you is uh, the bookmarklet we made for the data tilling service. So I'll try to be brief so we can all get up and stretch our legs, get some coffee, unless Murphy kills me. <clears throat> it didn't kill Kenton. Um, so this is the same uh, bookmarklet, but for the DTS service. So again, the point of the DTS here is to extract information from unstructured data. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing that uh, uh, Kenton did. I'm going to click and drag here to my browser. And then I'm going to go to a separate web page. I'll pick the web page for our group. So here's a page. There's a bunch of information on this page. Uh, you know, there's the raw HTML and then linked off. There's a bunch of images. Uh, we can see one here. There's multiple images on this page. And uh, uh, the idea here is that we want to try to extract some information from the images on the page. Now, the DTS can handle all sorts of file types. In this particular case, this specific bookmark focuses on images only. So if I click on the, the link here at the top, uh, we see that we pop up this, uh, this bookmarklet. Uh, in this case, we have this kind of you know, uh, dialogue that says, OK, well, I can uh, ask it to list images in the page. So these are all the images that are available on this page. We see that we have a variety. A lot of these images have people. Uh, some have text uh, in them. Uh, some are just icons. And uh, so all this did was the JavaScript in the page just kind of went through and is listing the you know, local images. But if I go ahead and uh, click on index images, then what this does is it starts, it sent the URLs for the 14 images to uh, our service, right, on the back end. And now the service on the back end starts doing things with those images. Now those things are, you know, the extractors that, you know, Kenton mentioned before. And depending on the, uh, what's in the image, depending on the file type, you know, it will do different things. And so as it's running, um, we can see that 13 were successful. One is kind of sitting out there. So Amarfi probably struck me out. But um, if I go ahead and search for, uh, for example, for face, uh, then I can see that I get a subset of the images, right? And there was no metadata on that image tag to say that there were faces inside the image. Uh, it's just that on the back end, our service kind of went through, did some uh, computer vision on the images, and figured out that, OK, I see, in, uh, you know, I see faces over here. Then it sent this, this bookmarklet, sent back information to the browser. And inside the browser, in the JavaScript, what we're doing is indexing that information, right? So that when I go and I click face, I'm actually locally looking for that information in that index. Um, so here are most of them have faces. Then um, I will uh, try, let's see, eScience. Oh, one of my extractors died. Um, let's see. Um, uh, so in the case of ISDA, um, it actually did uh, OCR on the image, and it was able to pick up you know, the word uh, ISDA. Um, so the idea here is that um, right, this is running for this specific web page, and it gives us more information about what's available inside the web page. If I pick one of the ones with faces, I think this is a good one and I click on that link, DTS, then it takes me back to the DTS service. So this page is being served by the service itself. And what it shows me is the original file. Then it shows a few here uh, tags. And we can see that the word face came from a tag. But there are other words that were indexed as part of you know, the tags attached to this particular file. Uh, down below. I can see that I have two faces. And I can actually right, see the specific faces from the image. Now, it picked up these two. It did not pick up myself or Nick, because we're turned around. And we have you know, some algorithms for profiles and, and you know, other ones. In this particular case, I'm just running the frontal kind of you know, uh, computer vision algorithm and the OCR algorithm. So, um, so let me show you just briefly a different web page, just to show you that uh, hopefully. So this is the Critical Zone Observatory's main web page. Um, 
if uh, I come here, I can see there's a bunch of uh, images. Oh, this is a tough one down here. This image always changes. We'll see if, um, if it can pick up that face. Um, so I go ahead and, and, and I ask it to index. I want to see if on the back end I've broken something. So there is a live uh, site for this, which so if you want, you can try it. I can give you the URL. Um, just come and ask me, and it's on the wiki. Um, just don't you know do it later, so it's uh, not all together. It doesn't fall over. Okay. So it picked up this face. It picked up the faces over here. Um, let's see. That one is no. Okay. Anyways, and so we can come over here, we can go back to the DTS, and we can find some information. Here's this face over here, and uh, another face over here. And again, arbitrary tags. We also have support for uh, uh, generic metadata. So in the case of the OCR, the output of the OCR process becomes generic metadata that gets indexed inside the browser, and so you can do that kind of thing. So I'll stop here. Um, and I take questions.